left with nothing. All you do is speculate. If Metallica ceased to exist, what would I do? Did I have enough things in my life that could fill that void? We became masters of speculating ourselves into the darkest, blackest place possible. Rehab was kind of like the last ditch effort. If all else fails, that will work. And I was afraid to test that. What if it doesn't work? James Hetfield was forced to confront his demons during a hunting trip in Russia. I was in Siberia, in the middle of nowhere. We're in this chicken shack, four feet of snow with Russians, and they all have AK-47s and uh, vodka. There was nothing to do for a week. So to sit there and drink, it just felt like a coffin almost for me. Then when I came home, the behavior continued and it, it, it just spun out of control. It was ripping my family apart. There was some ultimatums, you know, being thrown out of the house. It took that for me to realize you know, what a problem it was and you know what I could lose with it. As ever present as their hard charging riffs and sold out shows, alcohol dominated the Metallica landscape. It's all use of beer, huh? When I first met these guys, they were drinking vodka like water. Right of beer, pal. Alcohol brought out everything that we needed to say to each other that we couldn't say while we were sober and it became part of our legend. Because of that, I can't really recall most of the Kill em All tour. <laughs> Summer 2001. Following five weeks in rehab, Hetfield was scheduled to join the band as they prepared to record the next album. The day before we were gonna start right back up, he basically he called up and said, look, I'm, I'm not ready to start back up. I couldn't even walk into the room with those guys. I was so fearful of just slipping back into old patterns. I'm a friggin' addict and I can take anything to extremes. Part of me wanted to just drive over and say like, what can I do to help you as a friend, Metallica? But I didn't have the guts to do that. And kick yourself for not being aware of what the signs were because of course there were clues planted. There was lots of grieving from the past I wasn't done with and just lots of childhood stuff. You know, I come out a lot in the lyrics, more than I ever knew. I'd be writing about stuff I'd never try, you know, heroin or cocaine. There's no way I, I felt I had an addictive personality. I was pinning that tag on everyone else. Given. I could never forgive my parents for stuff. All of the problems in these lyrics, I, I mean, I go back now and read the stuff. It's like, oh my God, that's amazing. Meanwhile, Lars and Kirk felt powerless. They could do little but wait and hope for the best. He was supposed to go in for eight weeks or so, maybe 12 weeks, but that turned out to be like eight or nine months. Patience is not one of my stronger qualities, but it's been exercised a lot in the last year or so. Um, somewhat better at dealing with it. James Hetfield's recovery would tear down the old Metallica power structure. Now deprived of their longtime fuel of alcohol and internal conflict, could a renewed Metallica still burn with the same fire?